I love being Catholic for many reasons. One of them is that our faith is so incarnational. It's a very physical religion. Our bodies play an important part in our worship. I love the fact that as Catholics we use candles and incense and bells and stained glass and statues and we make a visible sign of the cross and we sing out loud and we sit and stand and kneel. We're a very physical religion which reflects the fact that God made us not only as souls but as bodies. And so we worship God interiorly in our heart, in our soul, but we also worship God exteriorly in our body with the things of our worship and with our physical gestures and actions that we do. Catholic liturgy beautifully reflects this being body and soul, being an incarnate being, someone who has a physical body. We're a very incarnational religion. But just as important as it is to do the physical actions, it's important that we also understand why we're doing the physical actions. Because if we just do things, if we just go through a routine of, of you know, sit, stand, kneel, you know, whatever, if we don't know why we're doing it, it, it doesn't really mean anything. And so we need to engage both our body but also our heart and our mind in understanding what we're doing and why we're doing it and be intentional in our worship. And when we can engage body, soul, and heart at the same time, it's a wonderful, wonderful act of worship that we can offer to God. The action that I want to especially talk about today is that of kneeling at Mass. Today's first reading ended with these words. Having set your gift before the Lord, you shall bow down in his presence. And so literally at Mass, we bring our gifts, which is symbolized by the bread and wine and the offertory being brought up and, and brought to the altar. We bring our gifts to God. And having set our gifts before the Lord, we bow down in his presence. We fall down on our knees in the very presence of God who is here at Mass. Bowing down or kneeling is a very common theme in Scripture when it speaks about the worship of God. We read, for example, in the Psalms, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. We read in Matthew's Gospel, of, of, well, in all of the Gospels, but Matthew in particular has several stories of people coming up to Jesus and kneeling before him. We read, A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Another time a woman came and knelt before him and she said, Lord, help me. And another time, when they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. St. Paul, also in his great letter to the Philippians, he writes, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. Every knee shall bend at the name of Jesus. Ultimately, in our worship, God wants our hearts. He wants the, the whole of us, the, the core of us, the he wants my being to say, Lord, I give myself to you in worship. But our bodies assist us, assist our hearts in giving themselves. Our bodies show what is going on in our hearts. How do we show God that we, our hearts really love him? We show that through physical, visible signs. That we get on our knees showing that our hearts are on our knees in worship and love of our God. We worship God in body and soul together. Kneeling is a posture that signifies worship. It's the reason that when we come into church, we genuflect before we sit down. And when mass, before Mass begins, we usually will kneel down and say a prayer as an act of worship before God. We then kneel for the consecration as God becomes incarnate, as the Eucharist, the bread and wine are changed into the very body and blood of Christ. We kneel before him. We kneel again then after the Lamb of God just before we receive communion. And we kneel after we come back from communion. And for more than a thousand years, Christians, Catholics, would kneel even to receive communion. Because of that, the beautiful symbol of I'm kneeling before my God as he comes to me, as I receive him. Pope Benedict XVI is one of my favorite authors. And he is a master of understanding and explaining the liturgy and what we do and why we do it. Um, he wrote a wonderful book called The Spirit of the Liturgy. And in that book, he has an entire section 
to describe and explain the symbolism of kneeling during the liturgy. He writes this, Without the worship, the bodily gesture would be meaningless, while the spiritual act must, of its very nature, express itself in the bodily gesture. The two aspects are united in this one word, kneeling, because in a very profound way they belong together. When kneeling becomes merely external, a merely physical act, it becomes meaningless. On the other hand, when someone tries to take worship back into the purely spiritual realm and refuses to give it embodied form, the act of worship evaporates. For what is purely spiritual is inappropriate to the nature of man. What is purely spiritual is inappropriate to the nature of man. Angels are entirely spiritual. They have no bodies. And so it's entirely appropriate for them to worship God just spiritually. They have no other way to worship God. But God gave us souls and bodies. And he wants us to worship him in our souls interiorly and in our bodies exteriorly. He goes on, Worship is one of those fundamental acts that affect the whole of man. That is why bending the knee before the presence of the living God is something we cannot abandon. There was a trend in the 1960s to the 1990s for Catholics to stop kneeling at Mass. Most churches removed the communion rail. Um, even here at Immaculate, this, the church was built with a communion rail and it was removed in the 1960s. Some churches went so far as to take the, the kneelers out from the pews even. Uh, there's a couple of churches even in archdiocese that still have no kneelers by the pews. So there's no, nothing for the people to kneel on. In fact, they're, they're told not to kneel at Mass. Uh, that's really sad. We've lost something core about our worship. That our worship is body and soul. And we need to be on our knees before God. This trend came from a mistaken theology that lost the sense of Christ's real presence in the Eucharist. That if we do not believe that the bread and wine are changed into Jesus, if the bread and wine just are a symbol of Jesus, then it doesn't make sense to kneel before them. In fact, it would become idolatry to worship bread and wine. But on the other hand, if the bread and wine do in fact change into the very body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, then it makes sense that we would fall on our knees before the Lord as we worship him. In fact, until the 1960s and 70s, all Catholics not only knelt for the consecration, but they knelt to receive communion as well. Every church until the 1960s had a communion rail. Most people think that Vatican II did away with communion rails, but that's actually not true. Vatican II said nothing about receiving communion at a rail or not. It didn't really touch the issue. It just became the trend after Vatican II to stop kneeling for communion and then eventually to remove the rails altogether. But Vatican II didn't do that itself. It was what came after that. Nevertheless, the church still teaches that those who receive communion have the freedom to receive the Eucharist either standing or kneeling as they choose. So anyone is free to still receive either way today. That being said, I've received many requests from people asking if they can kneel to receive communion. And therefore, I'm excited to announce that you may have seen as you came in, we decided to build some kneelers. And we put them here in the front of church. And we are going to begin using them for those who wish to receive communion at Mass. Nobody will be required to use them, but for those who wish to kneel for communion, you will be, will, you'll be able to use them. And I'll explain how they work in just a second. I thought this would be especially appropriate as we begin the season of Lent, the season of humility, where we come before God with a humble and contrite heart, and that we would come on our knees before the Lord to receive him in the Eucharist. We kneel so many times during the Mass already. We, we genuflect when we come into Mass. We pray before Mass on our knees. During the consecration, we kneel. We kneel again then before we come up for communion. We kneel after we receive communion. We genuflect again when we leave church. We even kneel for the St. Michael prayer at the end of Mass. Why don't we kneel to receive communion? That moment when Jesus comes to us personally and the Lord is, is truly uniting himself in communion with us or at least make it possible for those who wish to to receive communion on their knees. And so this is why I've decided to build these kneelers and make that opportunity more accessible. 
Again, to quote Pope Benedict, it may be that kneeling is alien to our modern culture, insofar as it is a culture, for this culture has turned away from the faith and no longer knows the one before whom kneeling is the right, indeed the intrinsically necessary gesture. The man who learns to believe learns also to kneel, and a faith or a liturgy no longer familiar with kneeling would be sick at its core. Where it has been lost, kneeling must be rediscovered so that in our prayer we remain in fellowship with the apostles and martyrs, in fellowship with the whole cosmos, indeed in union with Jesus Christ himself. Of course, those who are elderly, those who have bad knees, had knee replacements, those who aren't feeling well, whatever your reason, if you just prefer not to, nobody will be required to kneel. The church makes it very clear that you're free to receive communion either standing or on your knees. But I'm, I'm happy to make this now available for those who wish as an expression of our faith and our desire to show, you know, I think really it's beautiful that if we really believe that this bread and wine have become the body and blood of Jesus, that we are on our knees when they come to us, when the Lord comes and unites himself to us. And so may Jesus Christ be praised as we worship him in our souls and in our bodies during the Mass. <laughs>